Tib, I've got an off-market duplex that I think is going to be perfect for you to start your portfolio. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. You're watching Holton Wise TV. I'm your host, James Wise. This is the show where we work together one-on-one. -on -one. And who I'm working with right now, new client, new investor for me, all right? Tim, Tim from California, brother. This is the first time you and I have ever worked together. And I've got a property I think is going to work for you. Uh, but before I even get into that, I got it up on the screen already. I want to get into some of your questions, right? Just so you guys know, when we work together one-on-one, -on -one, you guys do these uh, analysis packages. It's like a two-part thing here, right? One part, I'm finding your properties based on uh, what's going to work best for your wants, your needs, your goals. But the other part is, is discovering what your wants, needs, and goals really are and, and working through the business and working through the process with you guys. So any and all questions you guys have, I will address them through the videos, through the course of the videos where we work together, right? It's not really like a one-night stand kind of thing, right? It's a long-term relationship. We're helping you build a portfolio. We're helping you build a business, right? Not just buying one house. All right, so Tim... You had some questions for me here, and let's just shoot through them. The first question uh, was just, you know, some specifics on debt-to-income ratio and what the lenders want to see and things of that nature. Uh, so what I would like to do to you, for you, is direct you towards our lender list. Uh, seeing as I'm making this video for you and I'm sending it to you in a private link, I will include the lender list for you in that email. Everybody else, if you've got questions, you need to get it the answer's directly from the horse's mouth, right? So you guys could send us an email, sales at HoltonWise.com. Give us your number. Let us know you want our lender list. We'll put you in contact with all those guys, right? Lenders are always changing their criteria and this or that. So, you know, I don't want to say something now and it doesn't age well in a few years. Know that everything is in general flux, and what you really need to do is talk to each lender individually, right? So what we've done is we've curated a list of lenders that work well with investors, and we're going to put you guys in touch with them. So, Tim, I'm going to do that for you. Now, next question. Now, uh, you said, I saw your video on LLCs. Uh, is there a benefit to forming an anonymous Wyoming LLC to hold other investment LLCs to protect against piercing the corporate veil? Number one. The LLC video, guys, that's very important. I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes below. Number two, uh, you're from California, and you're talking about a Wyoming LLC, so I, I'm guessing maybe you've done some type of research and uh, chose Wyoming because it's a very uh, probably low, low, low fee, low tax, low regulated state, I'm guessing, probably much more so uh, than California. Like I know for a fact... California, right? It's like $800 a year uh, to renew your LLC. I'm guessing in Wyoming, it's either free or it's very, very small. Uh, so I don't know much about uh, Wyoming specifically, and I don't really know much more about California's uh, legalities specifically. So I'm really not going to speak on any more of what's better versus Wyoming versus California. Like that is something you'll need to talk to your CPA about because as a resident of California, I would imagine you're still going to have some type of pass through. You got to pay for that. So that is kind of out of my pay grade, out of my level of expertise, right? You really need to talk to a CPA and an attorney on that in regards to what state would be better for you and what the tax implications are going to be for you. But to answer your other question of piercing the corporate veil and should you do it, I would say probably not based upon what you have said to me, your wants, your needs, your goals, you're trying to build a large portfolio, right? You're trying to get like 20, 30 properties in the next couple of years, and you're trying to do that using financing, right? You're not going to be able to get these 30-year residential loans if you're buying these properties in an LLC. You're going to need to keep them in your personal name. And as far as your risk exposure to, to lawsuits or things of that nature, it's really not that big. Uh, we're, you really get into trouble, guys, between personal name LLC is like 
when you yourself are handling the property management or you're hiring unlicensed people or you have a lot of building code violations, things of that nature, right? Then you really open yourself up to some serious liability. But if what you're doing is A, hiring a professional licensed property manager, which Holton Wise is, B, hiring a professional licensed general contractor, which Holton Wise is, right? If you're doing those two things and keeping your properties up to snuff, passing all local, city, state, federal building guidelines, right? If you don't have open building violations, right, and you have professionals working for you, your risk is, is very, very low, right? And then also when you get your property insurance, which of course we can do for you through our farmer's office, you want to have a liability policy on there, right, which is going to be at least 300000 but I've seen some people go up to a million. And here's the thing. If you work with Holton Wise, we require you to have that liability of at least 300k. We do recommend a million, and we require you to maintain your properties uh, in a level that are going to pass all local, city, state, federal building gu uh, guideline, you know, inspections violations. Right? You can't have building code violations and have us still manage your property. Is what I'm stumbling over saying here, right? So if you're a landlord out there and uh, you know, it's a building code violation, and you're like, oh, I don't want to pay for that. We don't have to worry about it. Holton Wise, we don't give you that option. We're going to fix it, and we're going to charge you. We're going to take the money out of your escrow account. We're going to fix it, right? It's not acceptable to us to have open building code violations. So anybody out there, if, if you think that that is an acceptable way to run your rental property business, hey, man, do your thing. But just so you know, we will not work with you. We will not allow that to happen. We will take the money, and we will keep these properties maintained. So what that means for guys like you, though, Tim, is, again, your risk, very, very low. So in a nutshell, the answer to your question is I believe you should probably proceed uh, in your personal name, okay? And I don't think you're facing a lot of risk doing so, right? I think the benefits of getting the financing far, far, far outweigh any potential risk of not having an LLC, right? Now, another question. You asked me, uh, is, is there a way we can work together more one-on-one -on -one outside of the video format? Yes and no. The answer to that is yes and no. Uh, if you go to HoltonWise.com, we do have one other way you can work with me, guys. You go to the Education tab, and what we could do is we could talk one-on-one -on -one for an hour, right? We will have a one-hour video call between you and me, okay? However, the answer is still yes and no because all of these video calls are recorded. They will be published to Holton Wise TV, and you will have to sign a video release. I don't do anything behind closed doors. Everything I do is completely transparent and open for everybody to consume and get that education later. So... If you want to work together uh, in a way where we're not doing these 10 videos or the, the MLS search analysis show, you really just want to be live one-on-one, -on -one, we can absolutely do that. But, yes, it, it will be published to Holton Wise TV at a later date. As far as uh, how you do that, if you want to do it where it's a video call where we see your face and everybody sees my face, we could do it that way. If you want to set it up where – people don't see your face we could have your screen not have your face or anything like that but your voice your audio it will all be published and again you would have to sign a release uh, but again we could keep your face out of there and then uh, another question last question you had for me uh, being remote, I have little understanding on the path of progress in Cleveland. Your videos on the Metro Health Investment and the Amazon Fulfillment Center are great. I will rely on your recommendations regarding this. And then you spoke about a couple deals you are interested in. So what I'm going to do is after I analyze this property for you, I'm going to really touch on that uh, more so in the Belmar video, right? You asked me to analyze 1550 Belmar. So let's run through this one and then we'll do 1550 Belmar. I'll film that one right after this one. And I feel like that should answer that question pretty well. Now, the property in this video that I wanted to share with you, Tim, is one that I actually uh, just analyzed and we put it under contract with another one of my buyers. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to send you to that footage now. 3392 West 49th, Cleveland, 44102, listed under a month ago. $69,900, right? Now, 
What you see here, we have uh, some photos of uh, the vacant unit, and I just want to spruce it up, okay? Nothing like too bad, but it's just kind of like dull, and these are the photos, right? The photos are taken from kind of far away, so I'm sure if you go up there up close, it probably needs some love. I'm sure there's scuffs on the walls, and I don't like to see things where they paint the trim the exact same color as the wall. That's very cheap. You're going to get a very low-end tenant doing that, right? So I have budgeted a very minimal budget just to improve this unit, knowing that there's going to be, you know, other things we're going to see when we get up close to this thing. Like, all right, like these two pictures are great examples, right? What you have here is this room seems to be fine, right? But then you got this curtain, right? We do not supply curtains. We do not supply window treatments of any kind for these tenants, right? Because if we do that, as soon as they break, these are like shitty little $10 things, right? As soon as they break those, right, they'll be calling us. We have to replace it, right? So we just don't provide any window treatments, right? So we're going to have to send in the team. They're going to have to remove that stuff, patch up the holes, things of that nature, right? So for this vacant unit, I have gone ahead and estimated about five thousand dollars, right? Five grand. And here's just another, like, just like a little bit of sloppy work they did, right? So <laughs> you got the hardwood floors, which look pretty good, okay? Now you got the all the woodwork, which is nice original woodwork, right? Now it's uh, it's like this oak-ish type color, okay? Fine, whatever. I like to go white uh, because this is very dated. However, sometimes we will leave them if it's if it's in good condition. But just to show you that the current owner just does some sloppy type work, right? What you have here, this is toe uh, shoe molding, toe molding, whatever you want to call it, and they put up white toe molding. Uh, white shoe right they put up white shoe but they got a brown floor and brown woodwork that just looks fucking stupid right so if uh, i could tell how stupid that is from here your tenants are going to think the same right so you can't, you can't leave crap like that right you can't have toe molding you can't have your shoe be the a different color th than the floor and the trim right that's just sloppy stuff and then we're going to need some love in this kitchen right like i think this is like a I feel like that's, from what I'm seeing, it looks kind of like a purple color to me, right? That's not going to fly. We can't have purple trim, okay? That's not going to work, right? So just cosmetically, we're just going to spruce this unit up because everything just looks dated, right? Get rid of the datedness of this unit. And then we should have no issue renting it, okay? So when we get that unit fixed up, both of these units are two bed, one bath. We're going to rent that bad boy for seven fifty. The other unit is currently being rented for 600 They put a tenant in there in February of 2020, so they're going to be good until February of 2021. Now, the market rent for that unit, of course, is going to be able to go up to 750 as well, but... You know, you don't want to immediately increase that, right? There ain't nothing wrong with renting one unit for 750 the other unit for 600 until that tenant naturally turns. Or we'll probably just do, like, small increases every single year, right? What you don't want to do is get your good-paying tenant to move out in February. You don't want that to happen, right? That's in a couple months from now. The idea is to keep that booty in this unit to keep that rent coming in, right? Keep the cash flow coming in, okay? Are you a lender? If so... Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. So, as far as price, the price is fair. If you got to pay $69.9 for this property, there is no issue with that. But I'm going to try to get you a little discount, $65. And then, of course, $5K, just sprucing up that other empty unit cosmetically before we put our $750 tenant in there. So $70K all in. $1,350 comes in the door. I anticipate an average expense of $749 going out the door, leaving you with an NOI of $601 a month on average, just a little over seven grand for the year. We pick it up, get a loan, right? 25% of that $65,000 purchase price, that's only going to be $16,250. Bank will loan you the other $48,750. Then you got to toss in that 5G's cash after all that's said and done. This would net out a 22.5% ROI, brother, right now. So we're looking at a nice two-unit property, 22.5% coming in, and you're only about $21,000 out of pocket. Welcome back, Tim. Now, here's the deal. Here's where we're at today. 
Uh, we got this thing under contract at 65k, right? That's what I was recommending to him. And then uh, we went ahead and we inspected it. He reviewed the inspection report, and uh, he doesn't think the deal is for him, right? He's afraid it's going to be a little bit of a money pit because you know it's not going to be. It's not a clean inspection report. And I will give you a PDF copy of that in the private email. Okay. Uh, here's the deal, though. It is an older property. Okay. We're talking like a 100-year-old property, priced very, very cheaply. Guys, you're never going to get a, a clean inspection report. It doesn't exist. Even if you get like a, a new build, right, there's still going to be multiple pages with uh, things that are wrong. So there is a big difference between having an inspection report that shows not everything is perfect to a property that meets all local, city, state, and federal Housing code violations, right? We talked about that at length earlier in the show, right? So we're not going to allow you guys to run slum properties. Again, not going to happen. We will not work with you in that way, right? We will force you to maintain habitable properties. But that doesn't mean, guys, you're going to have 100-year-old properties uh, where inspectors are going to go in and they're going to be like, yeah, everything is perfect on the house, right? No, you're, you're paying them to find, you know, this or that, find everything, right? That's their job, right? If they if they don't go in there and cite anything, nobody's going to hire them again, right? So uh, some folks get a little nervous by that, and they look at these and they go, how much to fix everything on the inspection report? And I'm like, that's not like a question, guys. The inspection reports are like 50 to 90 pages. Is there specific things you're worried about or things that uh, would affect the rentability, habitability? Yes, we could talk about those things, but you'll never get a fully clear inspection report, right? And... Uh, you know, I, I think that was sort of what this guy was uh, anticipating. But the moral of the story is he decided, you know, this one's not for him. He wants to look at some newer properties. Some properties are going to be in a little bit better condition. So uh, I am about to have to tell the, the listing agent, hey, this deal is dead. So I wanted to send this one off to you, Tim, because I think you could go in there and maybe pick this one up, right? Since we already got the inspection report. I think we could even use that to leverage a little bit better of a discount, right? So we're under contract over there for 65 So what I'd like to do, Tim, is let the sellers know, hey, uh, we're not going to be able to co complete this deal. This seller or this buyer, he's not interested. We're going to back away. But boom, I think that's where you step in, Tim, and you say, hey, I've reviewed the inspection report. I'll do 60 60 k as is. Let's close this sucker out. So that's my advice for you on this one. So if that is something you want to do, that makes sense to you. Uh, reply to the private email letting me know if you want to move forward on that. Otherwise, what I'm going to do for you now, Tim, is I'm going to start filming that video for the property you had sent me, 1550 Belmar. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.